Okay guys, here's our Tesla hairpin again. Uh, we got our hair thin wires, as usual, going across the room. Oh. And we're going to see about lighting up a neon bulb. I uh, expect it to work. It's still a vacuum, just a different gas. Let's see what happens. Okay, three, two, one. Whoa. Interesting. It's lighting up even though my spark gap is having problems firing. Okay, one of the problems with my spark gap was I needed to clean the electrodes with some sandpaper. So they're firing much better. I still have this uh, magnetic quenching under here also. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Let's see, I've got a 100 watt bulb and the shunt on there. Uh, the bulb is high on the rods and the shunt is on so this is the position and the setup with the least amount of power much better but I have to clean them often uh, now that I got the spark going really good uh, it hurts a little bit to touch the rods <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna replace that 100 watt with a 250 watt and see if I could touch the rods yet um, it's uh, <laughs> yeah it's giving me a little tingling in my hand uh, yeah, it's, um, Jesus, what am I trying to say? Uh, I think I'm getting the, the, the shock. You know, at first I'm thinking it, sound, it feels like a, a static shock, like a Van de Graaff generator. Maybe you can just get an initial shock, and then once you have, have your hand on it, it's okay. But it, it's, it's different. I think it's an RF burn. I'm not sure. I've never felt an RF burn. Maybe I'm feeling that now. Uh, let me put the 500 or 250 watt bulb in there. And I'm going to try to get a close up, believe this or not. And I'm going to let you see the sparks going from my hand to the rod. Uh, I'm going to touch my right hand on the right rod as we're looking at it now. And I'll have the camera zoomed in to my left hand. So I'm going to make full contact with my right hand. And then my left hand I'm going to bring in until you see the discharge from my fingers. Okay. God help me. Okay guys, for the next experiment here, see I got that shunt on top, you see I got one wire coming off of that shunt on top, coming down, down, and uh, let me show you that outside, hold on. And it goes right over here to this ground rod okay and there's a tape measure uh, we're at 16 feet and there is an LED there and you can see one leg of that LED goes to a ground rod over there one the other leg of the LED goes to a ground rod over there uh, 
I forget, they're about 10 feet apart. Uh, but this whole LED is 16 feet away from the lab or away from this other rod. So let's see what happens here. Okay, let's get a shot of that LED that is 16 feet away from our lab here. Let's get a shot of that at night so we can really get a, a good view of it. And I'm going to change it to a uh, super bright uh, jumbo, is it 8 or 10 millimeter? I forget. We'll see what that looks like at night here. Alright, for this next experiment, what I'm going to show you guys is I got one wire connected off of the shunt here, and it comes back here, down here, and it's a really long wire, it's probably 50 or 60 feet long, and the other end of that wire is going to one end of this fluorescent bulb. The other end of the bulb, there is nothing connected. I'm going to touch it to earth ground. So I'm only going to have one single wire going from this shunt to the bulb, the other end of the bulb to earth ground. Single wire transmission of energy. I'm just going to wait till it gets a little darker out to show you that. All right, let's turn the power on and check that LED. There it is, guys, right there. Look at that. <laughs> My security light, 16 feet away. LED lit bright through the ground. Okay, single wire transmission of energy. Look at that, guys. Single wire transmission. 50, 60 feet away. Don't matter. One wire. <laughs> 